Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top 10 mistakes Magic the Gathering stores make. And I have made all of these. So it has been a interesting experience. Uh, owning a Magic store is the definition of doing something because you love to do it. So Magic the Gathering being a card game has attracted plenty of people who want to open stores. Unfortunately, having the capacity to do everything right seldom becomes a reality, and this means that some stores will fail. So number one, the first mistake was ignoring the wholesale cost. I get many offers from stores that want to sell me their inventory. However, it's actually not a good deal. So they want to sell me inventory at cost, but a lot of these boxes, Journey of Nyx, Dragon Maze, anything in Pharaoh's Block, pretty much anything, even RTR, you can get for under, under the distribution, the wholesale cost. Number two is failing to target magic players. Targeting a certain demographic, let's say that you know most of your demographic is male, should you be spending all your marketing dollars if you have a marketing budget on targeting females? Probably not. That's probably the fastest way you can bankrupt. A big mistake Magic the Gathering stores make is failing to target the, the people who are actually going to buy the product. The number three, lacking a social presence. A social presence to a Magic the Gathering store is what it takes to put sales in visibility. When you lack a social presence, it means your store is going to have difficulty competing with other stores that offer the same service. Why go to your store when there's another one next door? At the same time, it restricts the people who normally come to your game from wanting to be associated with your store. Uh, number four, and I learned this the hard way, uh, initially I was not going to hold any events, but that is not, the word doesn't get out, right? Uh, failing to host events. Events are what pull customers and attract new players to Magic to a Magic store. When you fail to host events, you are simply stifling the progress of your store since people fail to create a uh, engagement. Uh, and they are not in the ha the best way to get collections to come in your store is if you have a event and people go to your store and those people tell their friends that's how again my goal is not to make a million dollars from this i expect fully to lose money within the first few years i have budgeted that but I would at least like to buy some collections but to do that i need to host events so the concept i that was absolutely 180 from what my original thinking was. Uh, not being on a store locator or not being visible to people looking for the store. Google Maps, WPN, SEO, all that is important. Not incentivizing your customers. Uh, you have to incentivize them to come to the store consistently. So it's not only enough for them to come once or twice. You want them to come like every week or once a month. Next is a failing to build a community. Magic, uh, the gathering is in particular, loyalty and community engagement is very important. You can't be, and that's why I found, I tried to outsource this particular community building to a new hire but the new hire is not actually interested in magic. It's very difficult. I don't know if one, one of the big uh, reasons that the previous person didn't work out was he took a two hour, 22 minute lunch. And you know it's bad when the other workers are asking when she's gonna be back and they started to time how long her lunch breaks were. Her record was two hours and 22 minutes. So yes, he didn't spend that much time building the community. And if you, if you hire someone who has no interest in magic 
or doesn't know magic, it's going to fail. That is what I learned. Uh, failing to build on momentum. One of the reasons that people come to your store is to remember the good times. So the goal here is to move towards that trend. Uh, a mistake many stores make is that they have a, a few clients and they don't make them repeat clients. The most important client is the one that's always buying stuff from your store. I think we have two more left. Uh, number the number nine failing to capture your location so no matter how awesome the store is if there's no people there's no people if there are people but they're not interested in magic the gathering you're still screwed so when you talk about location 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 it is super important if there is too many stores in your location you're screwed if there's not enough stores, you might ask why. Or if a store recently bankrupt, you might ask how, you know, what factors uh, were involved. And number 10 is the most important, uh, making it all about the money. Uh, with Magic players, the experience is the most important. So don't nickel and dime your customers. Uh, when players are talking about experience, you need to have, it's like a real business, right? You can't get into this and just hope that, oh, I hope it's going to work out, but I'm not going to treat it as a serious business. No, you need a business plan. You need a vision. You need something to give to the employees that, hey, employees, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to do this for X, Y, Z reason. Other than otherwise, you have kind of a disaster, and that's what happened. Um, I had hired someone in December. Uh, we were training. It wasn't just me. We we're training her to take over the magic. You might have noticed that during December to January, uh, that was what was going on. And I'm a big fan of giving people leeway. Uh, and I don't micromanage people. I feel like if you want to be here, you want to be here. If you don't, you can leave. Now, of course, uh, that's a little different. Um, so people, that only works if that person has something better to leave to. And in San Francisco, like if you hire a developer and you tell them that, they will actually leave because like one of my friends, um, Austin, he'll leave. Because he'll be like, no, I don't believe in this. I'm leaving because you can find another job. But And where I live, a lot of people I was hiring, maybe this was their only option. And even though they didn't enjoy Magic the Gathering, they didn't enjoy making videos, they, they enjoy doing commit. I mean, if you go out for a lunch break for two hours and 22 minutes, you probably don't enjoy your uh, job very much, right? And that was the first week of work. So... Uh, a lot of interesting things developed, um, and then the buyout happened in February 10th. So I've been busy doing that, um, but everything is good. Debt is secured. Not the debt is secured, but the money is available for the new store. And I just need to do a better job capitalizing on that fact and hiring someone. I, I still truly believe that uh, I have to be removed from it. Um, I, that's like my friend. My friend found someone who's very, very good, and he uh, he runs the store. He does all the buying and selling, and right now he is neutral, meaning uh, I hate to use this reference over and over again, but the model is perfect for Rudy. Rudy makes some, he opens, let's say, 100 boxes of a set. He makes all his money back from selling the non mythic foils and the non expeditions and the non. Uh, foil basics, let's say from Zendikar. So he keeps the cards he wants to keep. He sells the cards he doesn't want to sell. He makes money from that. And then he, using that money, he buys reserve list collections that come into his shop for dirt cheap, I assume. That's what I want to do. I want to eventually have the store hit break even. Uh, break even to me is, hey, you know, the store employee is covering their cost and the overhead of rent and stuff. And then once it hits break even, then I'm just, I mean, I'm just accumulating reserve list cards, right? 
I think you can get there. It's going to be really difficult. And I learned a very, very important, if not, I mean, it, it's good to learn it early on, right? So the worst case would be if I had kept that person and then a year later, she still doesn't like magic. She still doesn't want to build a community. Uh, she's still taking two hour plus lunch breaks without telling people. So like imagine like there's an event and off she goes for a lunch break and people are coming into store, but the store is not open because I'm not at the store. It's a Saturday, let's say. And I assume, I'm assuming she's at the store, but she took an extra long lunch break. Wouldn't that customer base be like furious, right? Like, hey, we have a PPTQ or we have a $1,000 tournament at 1 p.m., but the person didn't come back until like 3, 22 p.m., right? I mean, and I didn't know that. That could destroy a store's community and reputation because I have had that happen to me where game day doesn't start on the right time and game day suddenly becomes a sealed event, right? for whatever reason, to make more money for that store. I, I didn't enjoy that, and I would not enjoy a store. Um, I would definitely be very embarrassed and ashamed if my store had done something like that. And I think that's the route it would have taken is I don't, I think if I left that person to manage the store, who knows how long the lunch break would be. I mean, lunch break is two hours, 22 minutes when the host staff is at the office. Imagine like if we trust that person to open the store Saturdays and Sundays. Does the store even open those days? Because I sure as blank paid for the hours. Uh, anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.